Round three, we won the die roll. Gonna play first. Looks like we need to maul this one. Mm. Hmm. I think I actually keep this one. With a second land, we can do something. We do seem to be having quite a few mana issues this draft, but mulling to five just seemed really bad, because if we get the second land, we have the wall, we have the abrade, we have the cycle. Like, it does seem like we get quite a bit if we draw the land, but we did not. Got the land now, so we'll drop the wall. Because we have the desert, too, which is nice. Could have played the Earthshaker Kenra, I guess. That might have made sense, actually. Ah, this guy again? Yeah, that guy's pretty nutso. Pretty nutso. Alright. White mana is up. Let's play our Scrapper and pass. Guess we could have played the Resolute Survivors as well. Hmm. Might have been better. I don't know. On crop champion. So I cannot abrade that. That thing's going to be a bit of an issue. Alright, let's just play the survivors here. And I guess I can smash with the scrapper. Okay. This way... We drain... And... They can't really profitably double block it. Okay, I'm happy to trade this. This is just a good trade for us. That 4-4 was certainly, without a doubt, the biggest threat on the board, so just very good for us there. Okay. Ritualist. So... Shoot our opponent there. Another wall is actually pretty nice. Um, yeah, this is actually pretty good. So let's play the Earthshaker Kenra. We can make it so the Ritualist can't block, but then... Oh, uh, yeah, it's actually fine. So the Ritualist can't block. And then we attack with the Survivor with Drain. And it's fine if they block. They don't want to, as a matter of fact. And then we play another wall and we pass. Okay, that's a big dude. Gonna have to come up with an elegant solution for that one. But for now, we're draining our opponent, which is good. Hmm. Alright. Land is good here, too. Now we can play the Attendant. This is still definitely a race we can win. Hippo having trample is a bit unfortunate. I'm wondering if I should just block with the Kenra anyway. Because even though we take four trample, I could uh, I could end up eternalizing it and then make it so the thing can't block. Well, I don't think this is doing that much right now anyway. Although I might be able to draw something 
how good is it getting a 4-4 haste that can make something not block right now like this? They still just can block with that and ramp or whatever. Like, I might want to hold on to this in case I get a double block opportunity against the hippo. So I think we're actually going to take five here. Let's start the drain train here. True Heart Twins, nice. Does give us a double block. So yeah, next turn with double exert. Okay, well we can get that back, so that's not the end of the world there. I guess we can double block the hippo with twins and survivors too, which isn't terrible. Okay, no cards left in hand. Like, I'll trade my true heart twins for a hippo. I think that's fine, actually, yeah. In fact, they don't even want to do it. It's so good, they don't want to do it. Let's get the attendant back. And guess play the land. Now Inferno Jet's lethal with our walls. I think they actually just die next turn. Because if we double exert, they get drained for two plus that. I guess they're not quite dead. Wait. No, are they? No, five? Six, seven, no, they they go to one. They can go to one. Oh, that's too bad. Wait. Well, that's pretty devastating. Funny thing is I said how terrible this card was during... Yeah. Sad to see that card uh, probably win them the game, game one here. Because I do actually think the card is pretty bad. I guess we could still I don't even have flyers anymore. They lose all abilities. Lose all abilities that base power of toughness one one can activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities, okay? So we probably have to triple block the hippo and then abrade it. I don't think we have an out for the overwhelming thing anyway, so I'm not sure it matters. Hmm. Does this actually become a... Oh, it loses all abilities. And even if I bring this back, it's a 1-1, one, one, right? So, we still could win this with Inferno Jet. That is certainly possible. Especially now if they only have three blockers. Well, looks like they got another one. Okay. So let's get the Kenra back. Oh, wait. So even in the graveyard, I can't eternalize it? Enchanted player can't activate abilities. Okay. 
Well, that makes sense. So it looks like we're going to be one short of lethal, even if we do get the uh, Inferno Jet now. Well, open fire is not bad. Okay. We can buy some time here. So I guess we quad block. We lose two guys, but take care of an attacker. And we still have Inferno Jet potentially winning us the game. Oh, well, alright. Never mind. So I guess we just save the open fire now. Sandblast is not bad. Okay. Huh. So... Sandblast this. Open fire them. They take eight. But I still need to block. So if I have to block, I guess it's wiser to double block here. And then sandblast the 2-2. Two -two. And then, guess hang out. Mm, Alright, so even if we got the jet now, we still wouldn't be able to do it. So I can do this to, well, it's a 1-1 one, one now. Alright. Um, we should definitely win this match. I'm not afraid of Overwhelming Splendor. We did just lose to it, which is kind of heartbreaking, but um, can absolutely beat that card. So we'll bring in the Forsake. And I guess that's it. And then we'll cut a, uh, maybe a Sandblast? Okay, we'll cut a Sandblast for the Forsake. And we'll run it back. Okay, we'll play first. Yeah, it's a good hand. Even the attendant being sight. This is a great card. I feel like I, oddly enough, I never really played much with attendant um, in Triple Amonkhet. Even, you know, I probably did like 40 to 50 drafts at least. And uh, I feel like I maybe only played it one other time or something. I mean, it isn't uncommon, but... I guess I just expected to see it a lot more, or maybe I just chose cheaper things over it, but it is a it's a great card. It's the only cycle and balm card I know of. So take that as you will. Pretty nasty. No plays, sure. Scrapper has a pretty excellent draw. Because we are just gonna dish tons of damage out now. Alright, looks like they failed to find their white mana, but they do get a creature here. Oh, they have the mana list, okay. Oh, that's a good draw too. Yep. So we just keep to keep beating in here. Which is nice. Play the initiate and then we get True Heart Twins next turn and that is pretty 
pretty bonkers. Double exert. Each guy gets plus two, plus zero. And then the turn after that, plus four, plus zero. Eventually some plus million, plus million. All right, ritualist, sure. So let's just get a land here, and we're looking nasty. Sandblast will do. That's got menace. That makes more sense as a block anyway, to be honest. All right, so let's do that. Get our damage in. Pass. So we definitely have lethal with true heart twins if we draw land. So they're playing something big and nasty, sure. I still think we probably, yeah, we definitely killed him with a land. So we play the twins, exert for the fences, and they are toasty. All right, so aggro beats mid-range still. They said good game. It's not over yet, though. We only got game two. You got game one. Um, so, yeah, they got some fatties. Hexproof fatty is pretty tough to deal with. I guess we have a little bit of evasion, though. Um, and we have fling, and we have, yeah, like... Our deck is good because we have the inevitability against, like, even if, we, as long as we deal enough damage early, we can just ping them out, we can burn them out, we can fling them out. We have a lot of good ways to defeat our opponent, and that's why I feel more confident than not. Like, I, it might actually be smarter to switch this for a fling, actually. Um, it's it's probably more important for us to just deal a bunch of damage before they get to 8 mana. Like, granted, that brings us to 2 sandblasts, but... I feel like Sandblast is slightly less good against him. It's still very good, but... Um, yeah, we can keep this. Unfortunately, that stops us reasonably well, but at least we have a Scrapper we can play now, or an Initiate, or a Resolute Survivor, so options are good here. Probably play the Scrapper first. Well, hmm. A Braid is nice, too. So let's, uh... Oh, they missed the land drop there, didn't they? I see, that's good news. So let's just play the Survivor. I mean, yeah. Might actually make sense to kill the Cultivator. Hmm. I guess we can't now. That's good. So let's get in with our Survivor. They can block and ramp, I suppose. We'll play the Scrapper. Actually, I guess it still makes more sense to play the uh, Initiate, because the Initiate can attack into the Anointer Priest. Um, oh, I couldn't have play that anyway. I don't think we're right. Or could I? Did I miss a land drop? Yeah, I guess I did. I forgot to play my desert. That could be potentially costly, but I guess not too costly. Okay, so we got the sandblast, so we can I guess smash with everything here. Okay. 
kills a ramper. They did rip another land there, though, which could be a problem. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate because that card's really, really good. Um, hmm. So what's the play? We have five lands. We can go Scrapper plus Wall. We can go Scrapper plus... Oh, we can't go Scrapper plus Braid. So I guess it makes the most sense to just swing with the survivor. And then if they double block, we can kill the... Uh, this dude that dies anyway. Kill that dude. And play this dude, I guess. All right. Okay, that's fair. It's a lot of white sources we got here, so let's uh, get in here. So I guess we kill it. Still means we're going to have some problems here, but... It's a big dude. Mm, lane's pretty not so good, unfortunately. So I attack with everything, they do that, they take six total. Okay. I'm not in love with it, but we're gonna do it. Uh, this looks like we're coming up to a loss here, unfortunately, but it's possible to win. Just not very likely. Because they're going to gain at least four from this, and then, yeah. 
I'd say there's pretty high likelihood that they have the 8-drop enchantment too. We're going to take seven here. They didn't play the champion. That's interesting. I guess if they didn't play it, they must have like a removal spell or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a bummer. Oh, that's that's pretty that's pretty sad. Yeah, that card just absolutely doesn't seem fair at all. Sun Scourge Champion, it, it to me it makes no sense as an uncommon. It's it's so incredibly pushed. So that's pretty illogical to me that that would be uh, uncommon. But what do I know? I guess I'm not on the uh, design team. But uh, yeah, that that doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem right, honestly. <laughs> I didn't miss any pings. That'd be disappointing. So I guess we could rip the Inferno and possibly win, but I don't know if we got enough turns left in us, honestly. Yeah, it's not what we wanted to see, but it's what we saw. Well, I guess it actually makes more sense to cycle here, doesn't it? Okay, so we could win could actually win this. Um, oh my god, we're so close. We're one damage short. God, that is painful. Um, alright, here's... Okay. Okay. Not technically dead. Alright. Still have one turn. So I can make the Hope Tender not block. 
and I can get in for five and take them to one. But our only hope is winning through Inferno Jet. So we actually have to stay back, block the trample hippo with this, take one, block here, block here, and chump, and then top, top deck to victory. It's our only hope. I guess another way we could do it, you know, I think that might be the only way, because <laughs> we, if they don't attack with Hope Tinder, we can let the Earthshaker Kenra die to the Hippo, and then we can eternalize it, I guess. So, I have a feeling it's Inferno Jet or Bust here. So we're actually going to double block the hippo, and then we'll see if they make the choice to deal all the damage to the wall. Because no, they actually can't do that because of trample. Make sure we ping. That one, that part's important. My opponent is not going to be happy. My opponent goes, what? No effing way. Welp, he actually is taking it pretty well. <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, that was a lucky top deck. I act The funny thing is, I think our deck was phenomenal, and yet we were totally getting run over there and would have just gotten annihilated if it wasn't for a top deck for the win. All right, Inferno Jet, confirmed good. I like it. Would I play more than one? Uh, I don't know. That seems a bit risk. Well, they can cycle. Maybe. I, maybe. I don't even know. Maybe that's not that ridiculous, honestly. Um, maybe two is actually an okay amount to run. I honestly don't know, but when, I, it just won me the game there. It was the difference between getting two packs and not. Just getting the top deck for the win. Wow. That was a lucky top deck. So I'm glad you guys could witness that. I think Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs is a great card. Damage prevention plus pings away. It gives some inevitability to these decks. I really like it. Um, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll be back for more. See you soon.